Last up are Ben Fry and Phil Pinder. God, Bronock's just having a little sleep. <laughs> have to wake him up before we start. Accompanied by their magical mascot, Grobblenook the Gargoyle. He nervous. The Gargoyle's our secret weapon. Are you happy, Grobblenook? Flap your wings. You can't just do things on demand. <laughs> Don't be nervous, Grobblenook, it's fine. Ben and Phil are hoping their business can enchant the dragons. I just can't stop staring at that drink that's moving. Which one that's moving? The one in the um, goblet thing. We're bringing magic. We're bringing surprise. We're bringing mystery. It's a complicated business to understand. So fingers crossed we get it right first time. Hello, I'm Ben Fry. I'm the Chief Enchantment Officer of the Potions Cauldron. And I'm Phil Pinder, the director of Wizardry. And this is Grobblenook the Gargoyle, the magical mascot for our potions and attractions business. We are here today to ask you for an investment of £200,000 in return for 5% of our business as we look to expand our wizard golf empire across the UK and hopefully open a new venue before the end of 2022. Now, dragons, we are not going to wave our magic wands and make your money disappear in a puff of smoke. We're going to use it to open the hole-in-wand Edinburgh to sit alongside our existing venues, the hole-in-wand in York and the hole-in-wand in Blackpool, which is set to open imminently. In addition to our uh, wizard golf empire, we also have the Potions Cauldron Magical Apothecary in York's famous shambles, and we also have a very ho healthy wholesale business. The entire business is built around our bottled potion drinks. We launched with our four signature potions, and then we launched two beers, um, Enchanted and Spellbound. And then most recently, we've launched Cauldron Cola. Now, this has seen rapid growth for the business. We had turnover of £268,000 in 2019. Obviously, the last couple of years were a little bit tricky, uh, but in the year that's just finished, we had turnover of £1.4 Now, Dragons, we need two volunteers to step forward and try their hands at uh, Wizard Golf. If, go on, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get a hole in one, then we know you truly are a potential partner for us. Wizard themed crazy golf, a shop in York, and a wholesale business selling their own range of drinks is the eclectic offering from Ben Fry and Phil Pinder. Choose your wand of choice. Do you green want to have the pink red? Ball? Can I have the green ball? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> perfect. So far, so good. The pair are seeking a whopping £200,000 investment. Oh. oh! In return for a 5% share in their magical enterprise. W were you blessing it? I'm just <laughs> That's just checking the line. Whoa! Oh, blind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hole in one for Peter Jones, but can Ben and Phil join that most exclusive of clubs? Entrepreneurs who've bagged a deal with a dragon. Just so I understand the elements of the business, yep. your primary business is the sale of drinks. Yeah. Yeah? Then alongside that, you want to open up the Crazy Golf Attractions? Well, I, I think we started off with the drinks and yep. we had a shop in York Shambles. Um, once COVID happened and the wholesale completely fell away, um, we thought if we had our own attractions which were serving our own drinks, uh, not only were the margins much more magical, but we knew that we weren't relying on a change of luck for a, a business. So we opened the hole-in-one in York. We're in the middle of building Blackpool. This is one of the holes from the hole-in-one in Blackpool. This is hole four. Mini golf isn't a new idea, right? No. What is it about this that makes this, this business different or special? So we've come up with a unique concept. We've made it immersive. In York, for example, you are searching for Grobblenook the Gargoyle and there are riddles and clues. So you don't just play nine holes of a pirate course or a, a dinosaur course. There is actually a, a challenge for people to follow. Can I ask, what is your ambition for this business then? Take me ahead a couple of years. What does this look like? I think we'd like to be the largest mini golf provider in the UK. The current one has six venues. So we'd like to get to that kind of place. Ben and Phil plan to take their wizard golf countrywide. But Deborah Meaden wants to discover whether their plans for expansion are built on solid foundations. So let's take the one in York, because that's already up and yep. running, and yep. that kind of underpins what's going to happen going forward. So are you making money at York? Yes. yes. What did that produce in a year? Uh, 350,000. Profit? Yeah. Net profit? Yeah. So, when was the date you opened York? 
Well, the first business we opened was the Potions Cauldron in the Shambles, and we opened that in 2019. Yeah. And that was that was the, the POF crew where we sold the drinks from. And what does that sort of generate? Basically, the split between the, the 1.4 million turnover that we did in the year just gone, uh, 788,000 was from the Wizard Golf in York, uh, 420,000 was from the Apothecary, and then obviously we did wholesale um, of around 160. So we had a gross of 782 and a net of 148. So you've lost, you've lost money on the potion? No, because we've used some of the money to reinvest back into the golf as well and that we're, we're building. Yeah, let's, let's separate what money you've used. OK. I want to focus on profit. Yeah. OK. So you made 350000 on Wizard Golf last year? Yeah. Yeah. Net. What was the profit of the potion business in York? Uh, the potion business, uh, to be honest, because of all the drinks are made separately and then go out to each business, with no, 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 that, total business. this is a really quick, this is a number. Yeah. So what was the net profit of the potion business? Yeah, about, it was about 100K. The 160K wholesale business, what did that make? Um, probably about 20. So if your business has generated the profits that you say, which is 350 on Wizard Golf, 100K on your drink potion business and 20 on your wholesale business, yeah. that's 470,000 of profit you generated last year from those three businesses. Yeah. But you said overall your total business last year generated under 200,000. Yeah, yeah. So where has all your money gone? But what, what we haven't done and the reason we... Hold on, you're agreeing with Peter, but you said to us categorically that your whole business generated £148,000 worth of profit. That's yeah. what you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you had £350,000 worth of profit coming out of your crazy golf mm -hmm. between the potions and the shambles, you lost money. No, what we haven't done is we've accelerated at such a rate that we haven't actually got a proper cost centre together. So, for example... Well, it doesn't not... matter. You've got 350 here and you had £148,000 net profit. So, the rest of the business lost £202,000. Deborah, we're missing thing though. These guys are wizards. Oh, that's true. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. So they Sorry. can they Sorry, can do right. whatever they want when it comes to business. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> when it comes to remembering their numbers, Ben and Phil appear to have made a six-figure sum vanish into thin air. And it's not just the duo's magical mascot that's maintaining a stony silence. Any questions of the contemplation? <laughs> Just working out some numbers, actually, at the moment. Yeah. On... If you work them out, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and us. <laughs> Go on, Stephen. Age after beauty. Well, I don't know if that was too cruel. Cool. Grubble knock. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Phil, I'm going to tell you where I am. Do you know, I actually really love mini golf. But when I look at this, what I actually see as a business is you've got a really great initial location. You got lucky with that. So I look at the concept itself and say, how many, how much legs has this concept got? And for how long for, before there'll be another format that takes its place? And I just don't know. And then I look at the scale of this business. You said your dream was six locations. So I don't see a particularly ambitious concept. And I don't see a particularly ambitious future. And with all that said, I just can't get excited enough to part with 200,000 pounds. So for that reason, I'm out. A first dragon declines the deal. Have the duo done enough to convince Deborah Meaden that this is an attractive opportunity? First of all, congratulations on what you've done. I mean, nobody could be critical of what you've done so far because, I mean, you've started from zero and to turn over £788,000 on your first golf course. I mean, that's blinking brilliant, so well done. I mean, blimey. Thank you. What's to criticise? Um, the only thing to criticise is you lose money in the other two businesses. One of them might make money, one of them might break even, in which case the other one is losing a blinking fortune. That's really worrying for an investor. So I'm afraid you've made it really difficult. So I won't be investing. I'm out. You know what, guys? I think you've got a brilliant business. The numbers you've talked to us about make, you know, opening other sites an absolute no-brainer. The problem is, I have zero confidence giving you 200 grand of my money because I'm not quite sure that you know how to look after money. 
So I won't be investing today and I'm out. But good luck with it. Guys, normally, if I invest in something, I want to invest in a business that I can add value to and I'm rewarded accordingly. Here, I've been asked to put up 200 grand for 5%, top evaluation, probably came out of some crystal ball. Um, and I don't think I can add value to this business and it would not excite me. So for that reason, I'm out. Four dragons have now bowed out. Ben and Phil's hopes of waving a wand over their wizarding empire now lie solely with Peter Jones. When I first sat here, with no disrespect, I've got two guys dressed in white coats. <laughs> I've got one of them holding a dummy, pretending that it's real. And I've got a crazy golf set made out of some old railway tracks with a few drinks in it. And they're valuing this business opportunity at four million. I really thought this was almost going to be a joke. But when you told me the numbers at 350,000 net profit for one location, I went, OK, this could be something quite serious. We will turn over 2.8 million in the next year, at least. And a 1.2 million net profit. Yes. I'm a bit spellbound. Because I think if all of the things that you've said add up, I do think it's, it's, it's a financial investment. It really does make sense. So I'm going to make you an offer. Thank you. And I'm going to offer you all of the money, £200,000, for a third of the business. I'm going to split it equally with you. Can we have a chat? Yeah. OK. An unexpected offer from Peter Jones. £200,000 in exchange for 33% of their business, over six times the equity that the entrepreneurs were originally looking to give away. Will the pair risk everything yeah. Yeah. and attempt to broker a better deal? Once you're repaid in full, would you consider coming down to 10% equity? No chance. Because <laughs> if I end up getting my money back, that, there's a certain amount of magic that's required to get that money back. We really appreciate the offer, particularly after we were shaky on the numbers. Um, but 33% uh, is unfortunately just going to be too high for us. What about if I get my money back in the first 12 months? Yep. In full, I'll drop down to 15%. Twelve and a half? <laughs> no, I think I think that's really fair because it gives me a chance to have some money in the game. Otherwise, yeah. I'm just a bank. I'm just lending you money. Okay. I, I, I don't. I think we. I think we will. We will plough our own furrow. But thank you for the offer. Okay, we've got to make the right decision for you, and I appreciate that. So obviously, for that reason, then I'm out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dragon. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Cheers, Good guys. Luck. They may be magic, but Ben and Phil couldn't pull a rabbit out of a hat in the den. Failure to agree terms with Peter Jones means they must leave with nothing other than regrets. I can't believe I just said no. I'm like, can I go back? <laughs> I was sure he was going to take the 15%. I'm surprised he didn't. Mm. But while negotiations have come to a close, there's still some unfinished business to settle in the den. For one competitive dragon, anyway. I can imagine Deborah now, she's going to be there all night playing that game. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's get that until she's done it. <laughs> Straight back. <laughs> she's not going to let her that go. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly not. <laughs> right. Good luck, Deborah. Can you leave the lights on? We'll see you later. 